So welcome everyone. We have a great uh, interview by David, all the way from Kenya, Africa. So welcome, David. Thank you very much, Dr. Biden. Amazing story. Can you tell me a little bit about, uh, uh, I saw pictures of you when you were a kid, you were overweight. Your whole family, I think, yes. was overweight. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, I grew up knowing myself I'm overweight, so uh, it's not like something that um, I, uh, I knew I was gaining weight or anything, but I was just big ever since childhood. So for me, that's all I know. So I have a question. Um, in your uh, school, were other kids overweight too, or were you pretty much uh, uh, one of the only ones that was overweight? I think I was pretty much the only one overweight. Uh, okay, because yeah. I yeah. think it's, is it rare to have a lot of overweight people in your country? Um, there are so many people who are overweight in my country currently. Um, the number is increasing. Uh, we are the next uh, American obesity uh, problem. So, so many people are overweight in this country, yeah. So, so have the food, has the food changed in the last uh, years from the original food that you would well, eat? We, we tend to eat, for, for my, personally, my food has changed, but uh, if you look at the common meals that we have uh, on our tables, it's about uh, a lot of corn flour, uh, we call it ugali. Uh, it's a mixture of corn flour and water and uh, a lot of wheat products. And if you look at the portions, carbohydrates are maybe 70%. You get to, uh, 20 to 25% uh, uh, proteins and 5% uh, uh, maybe fats and vegetables. But we don't eat a lot of uh, proteins. Interesting. Now, um, yeah. the type of the quality of corn and wheat grown in your country has is it GMO? Do they have the, the genetically modified come in yet? No, no, no. We don't have any GMOs in the country yet. Okay. Um, no, we don't have. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so here you you're going along because I saw you were actually on a TV show. I think right. I think I saw a video of you. Yes, that's where my yes, uh, that's where my weight loss journey started. So tell me a little bit about how you came across uh, uh, some things to help you lose weight, and was that successful initially? And then what did you do eventually? Well, um, like you saw, the TV show was the beginning of my weight loss journey, and uh, it was a bit erratic. It was a three month uh, program. So we were doing things hurriedly, and uh, we were not uh, being taught the right way. It was just a competition, just like uh, America's Biggest Loser. So we were not uh, being taught the right thing. So I lost a lot of weight, about 34 kilos, but I gained 14 of those. Almost immediately, I stopped working out, and the weight just crept back in. And then um, I started uh, using Google, and uh, there was Dr. Bag talking about keto. Uh, that was in 2015. Um, I never, uh, I never started immediately. For one year, I was researching keto, the whole of 2015, and I've uh, listened to all your videos uh, since then. And uh, I started keto in 2016. So from 2016 to date, uh, in total, I've lost uh, 56 kilos. Um, yes, I was initially 168 kilos. So wow. it's been quite a good journey. So how much do you weigh in pounds right now? Okay, I don't know how to calculate in pounds, but I weigh 118 kilos. Okay. I weighed yesterday. Um, actually, I've added two kilos, so I, I've been having a cold. I don't know how that works. Boy, you're, you're, even your face looks so different. That's amazing. You did really, really good. Um, can you tell me? Thank you. You're welcome. Can you tell me a little bit about what you eat now and if you're doing intermittent fasting or are you just doing ketogenic? No, I'm doing intermittent fasting. 
uh, my eating window is uh, six hours. So um, I start my meals at about 11. And uh, I would do uh, uh, bulletproof coffee. Uh, this is uh, one tablespoon butter MCT oil. And uh, in about two to three hours, I would do... I, I like doing four eggs. I just want to be like you, man. So I would do four eggs and uh, uh, French beans. Uh, these are green, pe uh, green beans. And, uh, of course, uh, cooked in butter. And about another two hours, my last meal would be uh, uh, roast goat meat with uh, with soup about uh, 200 grams with soup and uh, because i don't trust the source of our vegetables so much i opt for um, a supplement uh, spiruluna and uh, one called green power we get it from south africa so it's uh, uh, spirulina with uh, chloro chlorophyll or something what do you call it Interesting, interesting. And sea kelp, yeah. And sea kelp, that's fascinating. Yeah. Are the soils, are the, I'm always curious, uh, are, are the soils um, volcanic, uh, from volcanoes, do, they, do you have good soil in Kenya? Yes, we do. We do have good soils in Kenya. If you're if you if you're farming or you know your if you can trace your food, definitely you, we have very good soils. We have very good foods. But uh, uh, even in the news, uh, we've had uh, people complaining of you know uh, fast ripening of the uh, avocados, or they're using chemicals to make them uh, look fresh for longer. Okay. Because um, access to markets is a bit of a challenge. Okay. Have you thought about having your own garden? Uh, with the fast life in Nairobi, it's very difficult. But I do grow some herbs. Oregano, thyme, and the likes. I saw a picture of you uh, with uh, coffee or something. Was that, was that you with coffee? What were you doing with coffee? Beans? Yes. I, I, I trade in coffee. I, uh, I do exports and uh, I do roast coffee. That's my main line of business, so yeah. So you drink your own coffee then? Oh yes, I drink my own roast. Ken is it Kenya coffee? Yes, Kenyan coffee, Arabica AA. And is it, uh, do you have places where it's organic there or without chemicals? I, I do practice uh, organic, I do single origin and organic. Um, so I, I, from farm to my cup, I'm sure it's 100% organic. Wow, that's, that's fascinating because uh, I guess Kenya coffee is it's pretty popular in the U.S. I mean, it's always curious. Oh, yes. So you guys have, you know, in Africa, I noticed that um, the jawbone, the teeth are very, very, uh, are perfect. Um, I think that has to do with the soils, I'm guessing, because you guys have a lot of trace minerals in your soils. Um, in America, we have a lot of cavities, and we go to the dentist. Um, do people have, um, do you guys have a lot of uh, people that go to the dentist in Kenya? <laughs> uh, well, the current generation, I can say, okay. yeah, we are really hitting, the, we are seeing the dentists more. You see the, the lifestyle that we're living in currently um, is not as good as our forefathers. We are not more the organic food. If, if you find a family uh, having maybe sweet potatoes or uh, traditional vegetables, it's very, very hard. Uh, people have pizza. Hey, we have uh, Pizza Hut. We have uh, McDonald's. So uh, everybody is heading to that direction. And it's more of a lifestyle. So uh, I see the trend is uh, increasingly becoming popular. I mean, Domino's just opened the other day. Okay. And uh, it's always full, packed. Uh, KFC just opened the other day. And the same thing. So it's, it's, it's going to be crazy in a few years. Yeah, diabetes. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the cases, diabetes cases are on the rise. I, I try to talk to doctors to know uh, uh, what's happening, to just consult, and uh, cases of diabetes are really, really on the rise. Wow. And also cancer. That's terrible. Um, 
I think you had a picture too of your sister. Did she lose some weight too? Wow, my sister has lost about 60 kilos. Wow. Uh, that, that photo, she was 120. And uh, she started a bit earlier than me uh, in uh, weight reduction. She's our last born, uh, born in 1991. So she started her weight loss journey uh, way before me. So currently she weighs about uh, 64. And she wants to lose another four kilos. Wow, that's awesome. And are people looking at you like, wow, what did you, it's amazing. Do you get compliments or people, like people that knew you before? Are they saying anything about you? Oh, yes, uh, I do get compliments. And um, to many, I also confuse them. They're like, uh, they're not sure if it's me or not. So, uh, yeah, and I, I, it feels good. It feels good. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. well done. I was amazed that you before and afters because the, some of the pictures that you showed me were just like, that's you? That's amazing. Yeah. So you did very well. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for the interview. And I, I just, uh, I hope that uh, it'll give a lot of people a chance to uh, give them hope that they can also do it as well. Well, um one, there is nothing like genetics. I, I think I shared uh, my, my brother's pictures. Um, uh, my brother, my sister, we are all big. We, we, we believe that uh, this is the way we are. So one, there's nothing like that. You just have to understand your body. Uh, take time, there's no rush. Uh, and uh, when you're deciding on a diet, because there's loads and loads of information on the uh, on the internet. Um, stick to one. Uh, I decided to stick to Dr. Bag, and I'm happy uh, with the results. And uh, I, I really want to continue working with you and uh, see I hit my target of 98 kilos. Uh, I need to lose another 20. Absolutely. And I think, uh, I think you did uh, have a couple questions, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, go ahead. Let's uh, answer those. Well, um, currently, the way I, 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 I diet and exercise, I normally diet for three months strictly without hitting the gym. Then I would do both for three months, the gym and dieting. And uh, I find it uh, um, a bit odd because my trainers keep on telling me, no, you, you can't just leave the gym and go away and come back after three months. Is that right? Is, that, is it a right thing to do? Is it a good cycle? Um, okay, so that's a really good question. Let's talk about that. Um, if you, um, I think a better cycle that you may want to try is... Um, working out one or two times a week because that gives you a chance to break your body and get a full recovery especially even at your age or even my age um, like every day is probably way too much every other day might be okay but sometimes two times a week or for some people especially if they're under stress once a week and I'm talking like if you do two or once a week and it's a hardcore workout and you let your body fully recover the gains will be huge uh, I had one person, they were doing uh, four times a week. I switched them to one, and that's when they started seeing major improvements. So the key is the recovery, how well you recovery. Um, but I think uh, probably every three months might be a little too long as far as waiting. Um, but keep it consistent and then switch it up. Like you have a different workout, so you're not... Because you're, what happens, training decreases um, growth hormones. So your body adapts to one thing and then you stop getting the improvements. So you do have to keep it uh, altered and changed so your body doesn't adapt completely and then it's all of a sudden it's used to this thing where you, you limit off, your, you maximize your wins. So you have to keep constantly change things. Oh, beautiful. Uh, because I do a lot of uh, heat and uh, CrossFit. Uh, I love CrossFit. Wow. Uh, so, that's the ultimate yeah. workout. If you could do that, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my other question was um, OMID, uh, one meal a day. 
because uh, sometimes I find myself uh, I'm just doing one meal a day and I'm, I'm not hungry at all so I don't know if this is uh, the adaptation or uh, but the one meal would be like 800 calories you know? yeah um, if you could um, squeeze out another hundred or two calories in there of high quality food and try to figure out what kind of greens that you can eat because um, there's quite a few of my uh, clients that do one meal a day and they're super healthy. Um, they're not showing any signs of nutritional deficiencies. Um, it's a little bit more difficult because of the nutrients that you would have to get in that one meal. But your body adapts and you're basically living off your own fat and uh, a lot of people do fine on one meal a day. So I think it's a, a good thing, especially for those people who have slow thyroids and that have a lot of weight to lose. Um, I think you should go for it. But I, I think you need to get a garden and just try to find some <laughs> type of uh, vegetables to stick in there. And I think that would just put the icing on the cake. Well, maybe I shouldn't talk about cake, but, you know. <laughs> hey, there's almond cake, so you're right. Okay, good. All right. Uh, another thing is that I have a problem with my hip. Um, like, I love doing the heat on a treadmill. Say I would uh, sprint at 16 kilometers per hour uh, for 30 seconds, then jog at half the speed for about a minute, then walk. So when I'm done with the workout, after some time, I start feeling the inflammation in my hip. Is this um, something related to weight, or am I giving my hip a lot of work? Is it the right hip or the left hip? The left hip. Left hip. Have you had any injury to the hip or falling on your butt at one time? Oh, yes, I have. I had an injury back in 1998 that affected my knee and uh, a bit on my hip. I just fell on my butt. Okay. Yeah, what happens, um, usually the hip joint is from a, an injury that you fall on one side of the butt and you jam uh, the body and the hips start becoming out of balance. So the best thing to do is to get an x-ray and look at your hips, the level of the hips. Draw a line on the x-ray and see what hip is lowered. Okay. If you have a lower hip on one side, you can put a little tiny heel lift on that side to raise the hip up. Or I don't know if you have chiropractors in Kenya. Maybe you do. We do. We do. Uh, but they can probably align that because it's usually going to be an alignment problem. I did produce a video on hip pain that you can do massage on the opposite hip, on the right hip. So if it's uh -huh. on the left, you work on the right side. And I show, I walk people through that. If you search that, if you can't find it, let me know and I'll help you find it. But it's a how to fix hip pain. You work on the opposite side. Uh, but it sounds to me, you also had a knee pain, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I would do the knee technique that I have online too. That will help balance you. It's just, I think for you, it's going to be a matter of keeping the symmetry there. Um, uh -huh. Because as soon as you push it, push it, you might blow out on that weak link. Um, so you need to make your body symmetrical. If you find a really good um, chiro, chiropractor that can muscle test and check the range of motion on your hip, left and right, and find out okay. if there's any restrictions in pushing your leg too high or too low or back or forward or out or internal or external rotation, you're going to find some motion that you can't go into and then you work on that to make your left and right side balance and then I think you won't have a problem anymore. Interesting. I'll, I'll look into that. I'll uh, definitely see that for the podcast. Beautiful. Uh, now, does it matter in uh, uh, the kind of food, like uh, we are limited to certain kinds of food locally. Uh, our bacon, for instance, we have uh, only one or two producers in the country. So I saw the labels and I see MSG, I see uh, dextrose. So on keto, these are some of the staples, if I may say. So. Would it be right to stick to a certain group of food, say eggs every day, uh, maybe meat uh, twice a week, uh, chicken twice a week, um, and of course vegetables, which I don't trust so much, and um, uh, multivitamins uh, to you know to take care of the vegetable parts. 
Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you're gonna just switch your protein to something that is uh, non-toxic, doesn't have MSG, doesn't have hidden sugars, and you just have to see what's available. I mean, you literally, you could live on eggs. Eggs are one of the most complete protein. Um, as far as the vitamins you take, really make sure, and you might be already doing this, that they're not synthetic, that they're food-based, uh, because you don't want to take synthetic vitamins ever, unless you're doing a cleanse, a detox. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's totally fine too. I think the, the meats that you have are going to be fine. Um, but yeah, it is a challenge to try to find the quality that you need in certain areas of the world, unfortunately. I know, I know. You can find the quality coffee, but what about the other foods? Yeah. But what, what, what's your thoughts on the, on the, on the bulletproof coffee? Uh, because uh... I just did a video on it. I, I have no problem with it. Most people can do fine with that. Um, and some people, it can stimulate insulin a little bit because they're doing the fat, which is fine. But I think it's a good transition for people. And I think some people uh, feel really good on it. But some people need to uh, avoid it just because it might slow down their weight loss a little bit. So I just have to do, do a little cream in the coffee and not the Bulletproof. And then they start losing weight more. So I just have them experiment on it and see if they can, what works for them. But it really depends on your metabolism. Oh, beautiful. Last question, leaky gut. I heard you, uh, you were um, uh, live a few hours ago and you're talking about vitamin C and leaky gut and uh, collagen, uh, it was a bit static. So I, I wanted to know more about the leaky gut. How would I know if I have a leaky gut? Do you have a lot of food allergies? No, zero. Do you have any bloating or constipation? No, I used to have constipation, but it's, uh, it's all gone. I think you don't have leaky gut. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's, they just have a lot of pain and bloating and constipation and uh, irritation in their colon and they also have um, problems with food allergies. So if you don't have that, chances are you don't, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, all right, all right. And we would really love to have your products here in Kenya, um, especially the green juice. I mean, that I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to get it online. All right. Yeah, I know. That's one thing um, we'll have to look at because um, there's a wheatgrass juice powder that's really, really good. But yeah, I know. I'm working on that. So, yeah, because um, I think I mentioned it to you before. Um, I have quite a following, uh, especially on Facebook. And uh, people are looking up to me. I'm not, uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. But uh, all bodies are the same. I keep on telling them. And um, I'd love to work with you and uh, bring back the experience uh, back home, you know. Absolutely. Um, question, do you have, is Amazon go to Kenya? Do they? We, yes, we use, uh, there's uh, a site we use to buy things uh, on Amazon. It's called Mall for Africa, so we can readily buy Okay, maybe I'll check that out. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I think um, we need people like you that spread the word in areas of the country that they're going to start getting fatter and fatter like the Americans, so uh, you can help people. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I look forward to working with you on this. Awesome. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate the interview. You've done really well. Thank you so much, Eric. Have a nice day. All right.